The point blanket has been warming Canadians for generations, even before Canada was the country we know today. But what do we know about this Canadian icon? For example, what do those points mean? You'll often hear that the points represent the number of beaver pelts that a blanket was worth, but that's not really the case. The points actually indicate a specific blanket size. Bigger blankets equal more points or greater costs, whether it's pelts or dollars. By coincidence, during early trading, the number of points was close to the number of beaver pelts, but the number of beaver pelts it took to buy a blanket changed over time. Different point blankets were traded in Canada by various companies, but the customers demanded warm and durable blankets that could stand up to Canadian weather. The high-quality blankets traded by the Hudson's Bay Company eventually became synonymous with a point blanket. These blankets were made of sheep wool by expert English weavers, most of them from the town of Whitney in Oxfordshire. In the 19th century, manufacturing was relocated to Yorkshire, in and around the city of Leeds. Blanket making was no easy task. It involved collecting the wool, carding or straightening, spinning and winding, turning it into yarn, weaving the yarn into fabric, scouring or washing the fabric to remove the oil, milling, beating to shrink the fabric, drying in the sun, which helps set dyes and also bleach the white blankets. The fabric was stretched on tenters using hooks, which is where the term on tenter hooks comes from, meaning to be tense or anxious. And finally, rowing or gently brushing the fabric to raise the wool or nap, giving the blanket softness and warmth. Before metal brushes and machines did the job, the rowing was done by hand using bristles of the teasel plant. North American First Nations made woven fabric from plant fibers such as nettle and fireweed, as well as animal hair. The sheep wool point blankets were lighter and provided greater warmth, which made them highly desirable and valuable. Most of the point blankets used in early days of trading were meant to be worn as robes. This is why the more popular blankets in those days were between two and three points or between five and six feet in length. These would have been too short for sleeping, but perfect for wearing as a robe. The blankets reflected the local styles of the Aboriginal peoples, with different colors being popular in different areas. While red was preferred by the coast and interior Salish and deep blue by the Simshian, the simple white blankets were popular with the plains hunters because they provided camouflage in the winter. The blanket was more than a robe. It could be fashioned into breeches or leggings, boot tops, liners, or socks. Blankets were used as cabin doors, roofs for lean-tos, dog sled bedding, and even sails for canoes or ice lays. Most commonly, they were sewn into capotes, modeled on the popular French coat. The versatility and durability of the blankets that had been tested by trappers and prospectors also made them popular with explorers and adventurers. The blankets were used as bedding or coats on expeditions to the North and South Poles, the ascent to Mount Everest, and on Charles Lindbergh's flight across the Atlantic. As time went on, the blankets became more commonly used as bedding. Today, the once popular two and three point blankets are no longer sold by HBC. They have been replaced by blankets that match modern mattress sizes. From their use in the great outdoors to today's homes, the point blankets represent hundreds of years of warm memories. HBC Point Blanket. Over 200 years of warm memories. <laughs>